Yeah. All right, excellent, excellent. Well, thanks for having me out tonight. Um, we talked about this about a year ago. Liz uh, asked me to come out and talk about portrait photography. I'm Michael Hayward, by the way. Um, and, you know, my first thought was, you know, you got the wrong guy. What? You know, you're asking me? Um, and it, it really created a good opportunity over the last year to think about what worked for me, you know, in terms of capturing portraits, what might work for you. And as we talked about it more, Liz and I really, you know, hit upon the idea of one of the things that, that we hear most often is somebody says, hey, I like to take pictures. I take pictures of birds. I take pictures of flowers. But because I'm the person in my family with a camera, I'm always asked to take pictures of people. And I don't like to do that. How do I do that? Right. So what we wanted to do tonight was take a couple of the ideas that I've learned, um, not necessarily things that, um, you know, are written in a textbook or whatnot. But, you know, I want to start there. Um, oldest uh, picture in the deck, but that's from 2002 on film, a uh, picture of my daughter. Um, and, you know, I put it up there because it was one of the first portraits that I took where I said, you know, maybe I'm onto something here. I, you know, I really liked it. Um, and it, you know, kind of led to me to thinking about, well, what do I like and, you know, what don't I like? Um, so there's 10 tips. You know, first tip I'd give you there, you know, lighting is really everything. You know, I'd say over the years, a number of people will say to me, hey, I got a new camera for Christmas. The pictures are not coming out the way that I'd like. Right. Well, what's going on? Well, they're almost invariably shooting indoors right with the kit lens with a small aperture without the benefit of flash i'd say in terms of pictures and the pictures will change i think as we go through but you know i have traditionally been really big on trying to find really soft light light that wraps around the subjects you know almost like creating a soft box outside you know for people so the first thing i'd say is go outside right but the second thing i'd say don't do it at noon right when, when you talk to people hey when are we going to do this um, oftentimes it's, hey, let's go at noon, let's go at 10 o'clock, let's go at 2 o'clock. Um, you know, you know this, right? But the lighting is terrible. Your models are going to get hot, they're going to get sweaty, they're going to get irritable, and the light creates a lot of shadows in places you don't want them. You know, like light shining down on top of your nose is going to create a shadow under your nose like a mustache, you know, for example. Um, so what I like to do is get outside, right, but find places where there's shade, right? And that's, if you don't recognize that in St. Augustine, the Leitner Museum courtyard. Um, and there are spots there where you can catch some shade from some of the buildings and some you can't. Sometimes you can catch reflections like coming off on the water a little bit here, you know, as well. Um, or look for walls sometimes will have light that's actually shining on them. And I'll talk about this a little bit as we go, but, but I think, you know, number one, you know, get better pictures, better portraits, you know, find better light. You know, and some of that's you walking around and looking at it, right, and putting yourself where that model is and saying, what's the light like? You know, if you're looking, putting yourself in their position and you're blinking against the sun, you know, it's probably not the best place, you know, for it. I like shooting at a bank drive through right? <laughs> and, and that's where this, this was taken. There's a little bit of red back there. That's from a Wells Fargo sign. Um, but that's uh, Becky. Becky wanted a headshot. She's a Florida girl. This was actually her corporate headshot. She got a promotion. Um, but we wanted it open and light and airy. Um, have you all ever heard the term garage door lighting? Yeah, so, you know, visually something that you might remember and think about. If you think about your garage, right, you could put up your garage door ever so slightly, get a little light in there, right? You could open it up all the way. You've got a little more light in that garage or a lot more light. Depending on where you put that person in the garage, how much light is going to be shining on them and what time of day, right? In the front of the garage, maybe you're getting direct sunlight, really getting them lit up. But at the end of the day, you could open it up and move that person forward and back and find the right lighting like that. And that's kind of what happened here. You know, we moved her kind of towards the front of the drive through towards the back of the drive through You know, we had lots of shade, but it was this was actually shot at noon, I think. Um, but light bouncing around everywhere, you just had to find it. So open shade, you know, same concept. So I'd say here with this dance troupe, um, we had no choice but to do it at 12. That was at um, uh, Washington Oak State Park. Um, 
didn't really want to do it at 12. You can see kind of in the back there how washed out that is. Um, but I knew if we were going to get a shot, we really needed to find some shade. You know, so we got them in there, um, kind of worked with it a little bit, got them in place, and actually put a little bit of fill flash on the front uh, to light them up. Um, we actually moved out of that, and I'd say this was easily the best picture of the day, you know, because we controlled the lighting on it. So something I try to remember, you've heard of the golden hour, right? So around sunset, around sunrise. Um, just by the time the sun goes down, it, it always seems like the light really gets good, you know. And I like it that time of day for that yellow color. You know, you only get that later in the day here in Florida, um, but I really like it. You know, and in this instance, the light was almost gone, so you needed a little bit. Uh, that's my dog Blue um, on his face, so we needed uh, a little bit of full, fill flash to light up his eyes. So that's just on camera flash. Uh, tip number two, you know, so we're going to do these family portraits, you know, where are we going to go, you know, I'd say find your happy place, right, um, and think about a few locations that are meaningful to you or maybe to the folks that you're, you're shooting, um, and on there I'd say rotate three or four different locations throughout it, right, sometimes it's just not working, but you go to the next spot, you know, and just the movement, it, it, it relaxes people and you get a little further in. What I wanted to show you here, this is at the lighthouse in St. Augustine. If you're familiar with that area, um, there's a boat ramp. So I, I'm laying on the ground here in the rain, you know, with these dogs. What? Uh, that's where that car, that truck was going to be. It has to be Right, so it's, it's directly behind me. Uh, yeah, it has something to do with his reception or something. Yeah, that one actually, FC3, by the way, that, that one would have been in FC3 as it, as it happens. Uh, Wait, what the fuck? So All he did is mark the highest now point Now we're looking the at the river, and we go about 20 feet down the river, and we've got that beach, right? And, you know, a couple of things I'd point out there, um, angle, right? So that one, I've got the camera lifted up a little bit higher in this, in this one. Um, the other ones, I was down on the ground. You know, I did that because I didn't want to get the cars and people in the background, right? So I was trying to concentrate more on, more on the animals. Okay, everybody loves the beach. You know, where are we going to go, right? Um, have you all shot pictures on the beach before, portraits? Right. So number one problem I hear uh, at, at our club, a fellow just moved from Michigan. He said, how do I get the lenses not to fog up? Right. So my answer would be put that in your car overnight, put it in your garage overnight. You know, don't take it out of your cold closet and go out on the beach um, and expect to not get condensation. Right. Um, but you get you get hair problems. Right. You can kind of see this in the picture. So a family photo we did of my own family. I thought if we ever do a gospel album, this is this is it. Right. You know, this is a little. <laughs> Uh, a little over the top, I thought, but you got to look at, you know, what's happening with the wind and you end up having to face people into the wind, right? Um, you get blown out skies. To, uh, now. So we're still, we're not seeing a picture. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So we got Zoom died completely. Okay. I think I just have to reshare, maybe. There we go. All right. How's that? Okay. Um, other user tip I, you know, share there. Let me see if I can get rid of some of this other stuff, though. No. Just go to the window where the pictures are and just click on that one line that's where the black is. Yeah, it's not going on oh, the black line. More. You see the cursor? No, the cursor isn't lining up. So. Where is the cursor? I'm trying to get to that. Yeah. 
Um, stop sharing. Well, it only lets us go in there, as you see. So. And so do stop, uh, stop sharing for a minute. I can't get to it. Yeah, we can't even get to it. Yeah, we might stop sharing. And then stop. That's what we're trying to, but we can't find the cursor. Hold on. No. We're there. No. Yeah, the cursor's in there. You don't have a mouse, do you? Is this anything? All right. Let's there you see. go. Okay, here? Yeah, click that. Okay, and That'll then get here, another way. how do we get this? Now go back to your spiel. Your, your, go to your PowerPoint. Okay, but we still have this over the top. And we'll get rid of this. I don't think about it. Under more? Yeah, Ah, there right we there. go. Excellent. Okay. All right, we good? All right. Thank you. Um, okay, also on the beach. So my wife is five foot three, my daughter is five foot eight, my son is five eleven, I'm six foot one. Um, my wife always complains about being the short person in the photo, but if you level people out on the beach on a hillside, it works, right? Because <laughs> if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? <laughs> All right. So number three, I'd say be the music. You know, you could say be the director, but I think be the music's a little softer. You know, um, I'd say own it. You know, the the folks typically that you're working with, you know, they want their best pictures, but they also want your advice and guidance. Um, I put this picture up because uh, Silas, newborn, um, Eden wanted some pictures in particular, right? So she sent me some things to look at and said, you know, I kind of want a picture like this. Um, I'd say that that's really a cell phone shot, right? It's what you're typically going to see with an iPhone, that angle of view also kind of shooting down like that. You know, so I came prepared with the 35 millimeter and also thinking it's a newborn, I can't really use any flash, you know, so I wanted something wide open like the 1.4 aperture, you know, on that. Um, not necessarily my favorite picture, you know, but made her happy, right? It's what she wanted. So, you know, along with that, I wanted to make sure I got the kind of picture that I felt, you know, I knew how to get, you know, so here, you know, we went outside and you can kind of see a couple of things there. See how it's, it's darker at the bottom and kind of lighter up there. You know, I just walked around their house to try to find the best lighting outside, you know, that was blocked by the house at that time of day. Um, and they said, no, we don't want to do it out there because we got the play set and the fence and the neighbor's house. You know, I said, well, we're going to blur that out, right? So that was a 1.8 lens, you know, 135. And I knew that all that stuff would disappear. Um, so how many people like the one on the left? All right. And the one on the right? Yeah, yeah. And I think there's a place for both. But, you know, again, just, just planning with it. Um, the other thing I'd say is working with the people, you know, I have a tendency to kind of mumble, the, 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 okay, move over there, move over there, right? Um, it, you know, it doesn't work, right? You know, put down the camera a little bit, especially with mirrorless, because you can hold it like that and actually interact with the person. Um, but again, I'd say, you know, give them direction, but be wary of that. Uh, family groupings, don't forget grandma. Um, the lady in the middle um, there, um, I had worked with this family before and I knew that she was very camera shy, you know, but she loves her family. You know, so I felt like I needed to make an extra effort when we were taking this picture um, to go get her, you know. Um, in terms of lighting there, that's lit with a, with a flash um, and a modifier, but there's also a little bit of an overhang there. Give them a little bit of, a little bit of shade. Ham it up. Um, these folks, I've worked with a couple of pirate crews a little bit. Um, uh, this is Tracy and her husband, Brian. Um, I just love this. You know, I love, see how she's curling her toes up, you know, really getting into it, right? And so I didn't tell them to do any of that stuff, you know. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I did encourage them. You know, you guys are looking great, man. That's awesome. Um, he had his sunglasses on. You know, hey, Brian, can you take off your sunglasses? Okay, no problem. Um, and at one point he had his hat on, it was just totally shading your face, you know? So I'd say, you know, pay attention to the details and coach them a little bit, but obviously they were in their own moment, you know, and that's a picture they really love, you know? Um, 
and I, I just love it. Like he's standing up on his toes and we got the, we got a little bit of wind pushing her scarf around, you know, getting a little dynamics in it. And I say, you know, once you're at that point, hey, let's try something different, right? Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, basic, you know, posing directions. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, we were doing something for the St. Augustine Camera Club. We needed a model, so I got my daughter and she was watching these videos, right? And the first thing that, that she found is if it bends, bend it, right? So basic model advice to make pictures better. You know, I put that in practice here, right? So Devin here has got his weight off of one of his, one of his feet. Um, you know, picture that with him standing still as a mug shot, right? Versus this picture, you know, this is fun and dynamic, you know, and all he really did was pick up his foot, you know? Second example here, um, Elise wanted a real estate picture, right? She wants to be approachable, but fun, also know what she's doing. Just a little bit of bend, you know, a little, little older, less athletic person, you know, but, um, but definitely better than kind of a static mugshot. And then Talia here, she seems to just bend everything. <laughs> you know, she's, um, you know, I don't know how that happens, but you know, you can see the sweep of the leg coming up there you know, through her shoulder and her neck and everything like that, just a really graceful picture, you know, just with some basic, you know, bend to it. Uh, number four, so if you wanna get more detailed with the posing, uh, I can't get that max off, but that's okay. Um, you know, I, I'd say look on the internet, look at your own photos, find some poses that you feel comfortable with. Um, here, I was trying to help mom out a little bit you know, so we've got daughter showing off her abs. Um, so we got the young man to block a little bit, right? And um, got, got mom to pick up her leg a little bit. Something I love there, get the shoes off and get their feet in the water. You know, these are folks from Ohio who come here for a week every year. Um, you know, they're really owning it here. Yeah, this is our Florida vacation, we're in the water, right? Um, pay attention to the details there. So mom for whatever reason i guess it's longer hair but the hair keeps blowing around her face i've, I've done them i think four years now um so you know by now i've learned to pay attention to it right or get somebody else to point it out to me um again the wind problem with the beach but you know just get somebody to pay attention yes sir yeah so what that is um somebody we had this conversation earlier i think nancy said you know what do you shoot portraits with said mostly a 28 to 70. so it was a 28 to 70. i don't remember how i ended up at 38 you know on it um it's probably moving for more like 35. Um, yeah and that's cropped and i think it's probably shot vertically and cropped So, you know, group pictures. So I'd say avoid the usual suspects lineup, right? So, um, you know, iconic picture, but you know, not typically what you want and what people maybe think that you're looking for, you know, they're just gonna line up like that. Um, I did a project where I went to some bank branches um, and trying to catch the teams at the branch level, right? And I knew that I wanted to avoid the usual suspect stuff. So I was moving furniture around. It doesn't normally look like this. You know, and we, the book was laying around, good group of people. We came up with this family story night concept here. Um, you know, I just think that's a more memorable and engaging uh, picture, especially, you know, in a corporate environment, um, but yet still professional. You know, I wish I got all of his foot though. So it's our job to make magic, right? So. Um, some of you been, I think I saw a birding festival t-shirt in here. Some of you been to the birding festival in St. Augustine before. Um, so you may have been in Bobby Lane does a portrait workshop there. Um, Ivy works for Uncorked Occasions and um, will sign you in for the boarding fe birding fest. It was also a model, you know, for that workshop. Um, so that's what we got in the workshop. Right? Um, I say the first picture is, you know, not bad. It's kind of candle heavy. It's not my picture, it's, you know, off their website. Um, but I think the second one, you know, is one that she really enjoys, you know, and is more useful um, in terms of, you know, capturing her. Um, the next one here, she also had, had her boyfriend. This is another year that we did it. Um, and we're like, hey, let's get you in the picture too, 
right? Um, and you end up with toads. You were at one of those, right? Was it was it that year that we were together? Yeah. He said he wasn't a model. He wasn't a model, right? So now, now he's a model, right? Now I got the picture of my Harlequin romance, if I ever write one. Um, you know, I, I really like the picture. Um, you know, I think there's some flaws. One thing happens when you do build this out, you know, you see all the flaws, because go through it a couple of times. But, um, but so I've got this picture, right? And so I'm going back for another pirate session. And one of the folks said to me, um, hey, you know, I never get a good picture. You know, I'd really like to get a good picture of my, my, myself and my husband, but we're just not that photogenic, right? Can, can you help us out, right? So I said, hey, um, do you want to try this, right? So that's what we got with him, you know? And, you know, I'd say part of the fun there is they looked at it as, you know, middle-aged people. I'm showing them this young couple with the Harlequin romance, you know, they're like, they really owned it, you know? And um, so had a lot of fun with that. We got that good picture. Um, and then here, um, you know, I've got that pose, right? And they, they were like, tell us what to do. Okay, well, here, take a look at this. Can you do this? Um, fun note there, he is probably 18 inches taller than his wife there. So he just basically, you know, got, got, got down like this, you know? Um, <laughs> problems can be solved, right? But, you know, basically the same pose, right? Three takes on it. All right, my favorite, right? So if you have a couple, you know, tell them, lean in, touch your foreheads, look into each other's eyes, no kissing allowed. And, you know, then you get something like that. Right? Um, and just, you know, just joy and fun and, you know, they're kind of giggling because, you know, again, sort of older folks that maybe haven't done wedding pictures in a while, right, which is what you're kind of getting to do, you know. Um, same thing here. Um, you know, kind of a, a bittersweet story here. Um, that's William and Pauline. William's a good friend of mine. And Pauline, unfortunately, passed away, you know, about a year after this picture was taken. Um, but we got an opportunity to catch them at a really joyous time, you know, and it's just that prompt, you know, hey, just put your foreheads together, right? And it doesn't always work, you know, but it works a lot. So posing, one of the things that um, Nancy and I were talking about doing is doing a workshop with, with this list. Um, I went to a conference in, in uh, St. Louis called Shutterfest, um, and the presentation was uh, 10 poses in 60 seconds. So around Valentine's Day, Nancy? Yeah. yeah so we're going to try to, to recreate, uh, uh, replicate this. Um, but posing, right? Here it talks about small movements, right? So couples face each other, hands around neck and waist, right? Again, we're just kind of float. And it's okay to have that script or checklist on your phone, you know, or in your hand or whatnot. You know, so look at each other, look at the camera, bride slides the ring hand to bicep. Okay, that's what we got there except for if we're talking to Max, but uh, um, so groom touches her jaw, brings her in for a kiss, right? We're going to look at each other, look away. Uh, we're going to look at each other and have a bend at the, at the waist, right? That's all two minutes, you know, and they really got in the flow of that. Um, it enables you to kind of open things up a little bit. They're having fun with it, right? You know, as, as you click away. Kind of the opposite, right? Um, instead of a, a fast pace, you know, this is a really snail's crawl pace. So another uh, workshop that I was involved in, but um, newborn nerds. So they specialize in baby photography. Um, the instructor, that's her baby and that's her husband. So baby was completely asleep, newborn. She spent a lot of time interlacing those fingers and getting it under the chin of the baby to, to help the baby prop uh, himself, I think, um, together, you know, while he's asleep. So poor dad's kneeling there and she got him going like this, waiting for the baby, you know, and it was a good 10 minutes, you know, wrapping that baby up and getting ready. Um, but, you know, here it's just really taking it slow, you know, and keeping that baby asleep and, uh, I think dad's kind of asleep there too, maybe. But, 
Um, so number five, so active, right? Talk about action photos a little bit. Do you remember her name? Yes, Brooke. Brooke, okay. So this is another thing that Nancy put together, the Michael Joseph workshop. Um, so Brooke came, Brooke's a dancer, right? So, um, you know, I think that's, it's a pretty good picture. You know, um, I think that you looking at her, I was like, she's a dancer. Why is she not dancing, right? She's in her tutu and everything. So I'm like, let's, you know, let's get you dancing. Um, you know, what can you do, right? Um, so I asked her to do a little jump or do a dance or whatever she did. And then I said, oh shoot, I missed it. <laughs> can you do that again, right? Oh, I missed it again. Can you slow it down a little bit more? Okay, I missed it again. Can you really slow it down? You know, and that's, that's what we ended up with, you know? And um, I think there's a place for both pictures, but you know, I hate it when you have something like that where there's a dancer and you don't get that. So we got the portrait, we got the dancing, and I'd say also think about some detail shots, right? Because one of the things I noticed was her shoes were pretty beat up, you know, and I was talking to her about that a little bit. And she said, yeah, it's time for new shoes, you know, but she was proud of the fact she wore them out, you know, in practice. Um, so I wanted to, you know, get that as well. So a little blur, so on action shots, um, you know, this is one where I'd say it works. You know, if you look at the hoofs, they're they're a little bit blurry. Um, the rope's a little bit blurry, but it's sharp enough in the horse, the front of the horse is a little blurry, but it's sharp enough in the right spots, right? So in, in the rider's face, um, this was actually at night, as you can tell, but it was raining too, which is what all those splotchy things in the sky are, you know, slow motion kind of rain. Um, why is it black and white? um because the arena lights were crazy it was blue and purple and green and everything in between and i'll, I'll cover that a little bit later too um so a little better light there right and i'd say you know with action if you can set your camera to maintain a continuous focus right get on the eyes um this is one i, I guess i'd point out the f-stop there 2.8 i mean it's really sharp for 2.8 if you have everything in the same uh, uh focal plane um, but again, you know, like this little tiny bit of blur on the on the hoof, but but fast enough speed to catch the the uh, the dirt, you know, piling up. Um, you get the look on her face. You get the look on the, the horse's face. Uh, anticipate so more action stuff. But I have worked, uh, I think, four years on the pick up the pace 5K um, in St. Augustine. Um, you know, taking pictures of participants. And I did a lot of cross country when my kids were in school. Um, so, you know, I've kind of done a lot of this, you know. Um, so I was trying to get something different. And I always wanted to get in front of them as they're coming at me, but I was afraid I was going to get run over, you know. So, so what I ended up doing, I, I got a fisheye lens, um, 15 millimeter. Um, and here, you know, I, I stood right in front of the, the starting line. And it's pretty easy because, like, you know, when it's going to start. Right, you know, you find your spot, um, and just waited for the, for the gun to go off, right, and then you know, kind of do this, you know, right. Um, so that one, um, that's an FC three one ribbon winner as well, you know. But I was happy with it, you know, just a little bit of a different kind of shot instead of the, the normal. Um, you know, all of this stuff, but action, especially, I say, take the high percentage shot first, right? So. That one's relatively easy, although it was a dark environment, right? But, you know, on camera flash, um, you know, get that, get it in the can, so to speak. You know, you got a picture um, and then, you know, open up for other things, right? So that one was harder. Um, so that's a slow shutter speed with a flashlight, you know, so you've got the flashlight, you're kind of doing this, you know, with, with the guy. Um, you know, it's a real high failure rate, but, you know, it's fun when it works, right? So I say, you know, take the high percentage shot, then get creative. Um, in the daylight, you know, panning a, show, a slow shutter speed works too. A um, couple of weeks ago in the Poconos, you know, I, um, I was kind of bored with it, you know, so I was trying, maybe I was thinking of Anita, I don't know, you know, with, with in-camera motion, you know, but uh, um, yeah, but, you know, put... 130th there and I was just trying to keep up with uh, you know with the horses the reason it's 118th is that's what it took to get the shutter speed that low you know in, in the broad daylight um 
kind of the opposite, right? So slowing down the action. So the bull rider here, no action, right? But that's that's literally the moments before he's getting on the bull, you know, so he's thinking about it, saying his prayers, getting ready to go, um, you know, tends to be pretty, maybe even more impactful than a picture on the bull. Uh, I think this is the last sports one, but, you know, the in-between moments, you know, so, you know, what I liked about this, I mean, there's a story there, right? You know, a coach telling the players what to do, maybe a little exasperated. They're all paying attention. A uh, little bit of a different shot, perhaps, than, you know, spiking the ball. Why is it black and white? Because gym lighting is terrible. Uh, number six, you know, I'd say collaborate with the models, right? Um, show them the back of the camera. You know, they get engaged with it. You know, sometimes they'll even say, oh, I don't like the way I like, right? The way I look, and let's do something about that. Um, but more often than not, they're like, oh, wow, that's cool, you know? And, and you keep showing them, pay attention and improvise. You know, this is just a little shot where, you know, I don't know who said it, but someone's like, can you just spin around, you know? And maybe a little blurry, but you know, a fun shot, you know, a little better than some of the, the posed ones that we had. Um, same thing there, I'd say, you know, waiting for, we were photographing the ladies in the family, you know, and the guys were just kind of waiting and they were kind of looking, uh, they, they looked like that, right? They were just, um, you know, granddad's leaning on grandson. Um, and by the time I noticed it, they stopped doing it, you know, and I was like, can you do that again? Um, and Isaac, you know, the grandson is like, no, we're going to look stupid. <laughs> like, like, no, no, you look good. Trust me. Right. Um, so, you know, good moment. Uh, something else I thought about there, um, black and white, we talked about a little bit, you know, it can fix some of your problems. Um, plus it's artsy, right? So, um, but that one, um, how many people like the black and white versus the, the color, right? Yeah, yeah, color, anybody love, like the color better? Yeah. Um, you know, I think mom might have liked the color better because she's got a really nice garden, a lot of colors. But, you know, I feel like the black and white was really more about the, the two guys, you know. Um, so have fun with it. So doing a family, again, maybe avoiding the usual suspects pose, you know, with that. So uh, went out to the beach, naturally, um, do these pictures. So Ali and Naveed in the, in the, in the middle and Raj is the younger brother. Uh, he's a clown, right? So he can start doing this, you know, on his own. And I'm like, can we get everybody to do this, All right? And then grandma and grandpa owning it, you know, on the other side, you know. And, um, you know, I just think, again, a different for, sort of family picture, you know, than the usual. So where, where did you focus? Uh, where did I focus? That's uh, right on Alley in the middle. Where did I focus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah on Alley. And... So I talk about this a little bit later, but you know, just for me, um, if I was taking portraits, I usually set the camera to F6 before I'm, I, I arrive. Um, if I've got several people like this, I usually go in F8 right away. Um, I can always tweak it a little bit in Photoshop or, or Topaz, but you know, just kind of my rule of thumb would be, you know. Two people, I'm um, starting at F6, kind of the same thing I was saying about getting the, the shot and then experimenting a little bit. Usually I want to get some at F6 and I feel like I'm going to get that. Once we add a third person, I'm like F8, you know. Um, I don't usually go a whole lot further than that, um, you know, sometimes, but I think there's a few. But yeah, focused on Allie there um, in the middle. Um, and you can kind of see on the other two sides, they're dropping off a little bit, but I think that's okay. You know, for this one. But you don't have to smile, right? Have fun with it. But, you know, here's one where, um, you know, I think, you know, beautiful young lady looks better when she doesn't smile, you know, really opens up her eyes. Um, same thing kind of here, you know, she has a tremendous smile, but she tends to, you know, kind of squint, you know, when she does that. Um, and then here, you know, kind of a moody picture, right? Smile probably wouldn't work there, so. You know, if you can find the moment where they forget you're taking the picture, oops. 
Hmm. We lost some stuff. How did that happen? Hmm. Well, we might come back to those or we might not. Um, kids and pets. So this was the Rick and Rick workshop that, that we did. Um, and that got a little out of hand in a small room, you know, and so forth. So we had these, this family, not a lot going on uh, with them, with the studio lights. So I just had a flash and I was bouncing that off the ceiling. Um, and so another one with kids, I was, I was laying down on the ground, you know, in front of them. I'd say that, you know, the secret for this picture, right, is him looking at you, right, and having that expression. Um, and you only get that if he's looking at his mom, you know, or his dad. So I kept telling mom, come on over, come on over, right? And, and mom was standing basically right on top of me, you know, and, and the kid was looking, you know, at him. Because um, otherwise, you know, he would have been looking like this, right, the whole time, because that, that's what happens. So, you know, what I think works there, you got, you know, the body language and the posture and kind of that foot, you know, coming forward. A little kid like that, I can't really tell him to do that. You know, I can just try to catch it um, and try to get mom in there. Um, same thing with those dogs that we had up earlier, kept looking at mom, you know, and I was like, mom, come on, come on, come in here, right? And sometimes I'll have mom and I'll lean right over mom's shoulder, you know, try to get that shot. Um, other people have different ways of doing it, you know, maybe engaging the kids, but I figure mom, you know. And that one, black and white, you know, why is it black and white? Because that carpet was god awful, it's like 10 different colors, um, just, just didn't work. All right, number seven. Right, so I'd say call your shot. We've talked about this a little bit, but you know, think beforehand, does it make sense for a portrait or a landscape? Like that question about the, um, the focal length on the lens, right? You know, I, I kind of knew going in, you know, I got four people on the beach, that's probably gonna be a vertical portrait shot, you know, versus some of the bigger ones. Um, I put up there, you know, the aperture on, on those shots. The reason I did that is I tend to shoot aperture priority or manual. Um, I always just try to get, you know, about one 250th if I can on the shutter, um, you know, which will be enough to usually cover the action. And we talked about this a little bit, but, you know, if you have a lens that goes to 1.4, um, you know, use it and it'll, you'll get some really interesting shots. Um, but I usually wouldn't start there, you know, cause it's just too easy to miss, you know, you can. Uh, you can miss the focus, you can get the wrong blur in the wrong place. So I try to get the ones, ones done that I can um, and then move it up a little bit. Um, image stabilization, I find you know, it doesn't really help you with portraits, you know, for the most part, you know, because people are moving. Um, you know, example there, I'd say, you know, to the degree that works, you know, what makes it work, right? It's the eye contact with the baby, right? You got to be at that, that eye level for that to work. If I was leaning over, you know, it's a different picture. Um, I would even say you could probably get even a little bit lower on that, right, and make it work. So a usual perspective, right? So this is my son. Um, we were we were walking, and I kind of saw this field with the dandelions. He's kind of a he's known for laying in the grass, kind of kind of lolling about, you know, like, hey, get down there, right? And so I was actually standing over him. I photoshopped out my shoes, you know, which one either side of him. Um, so, you know, leaning down like this. And at first, you know, he was like, just like, like this kind of dead looking, you know, and I'm like, no, man, come on, you got to do a crunch, right? And so, you know, he's starting to flex his abs a little bit and kind of making him laugh, you know, and that's this is what you get, right? So again, just a different, different perspective. So lens choice, right? So you can go for chaos or maybe not. Goodness gracious. These were here a minute ago. So why do we have these? Okay. That's not going to work. Oh, they're all gone. Hmm. Oh, let me see this. All right, 
Let's try this. Out of here. I'll close that. I'll try this. Okay. All right, maybe this will work. Do we see that on Zoom? <coughs> no, okay. Okay. Zoom, share screen. Okay, excellent. <coughs> okay. All right, that's what I was trying to show you earlier. So in a way that's the basically put your head, your foreheads together shot, right? Um, but you know, they forgot we're there, we're taking pictures, you're getting that moment, right? I'd make the argument that's basically the same photo, right? Instead of we changed out the horse. Um, okay. And so they're just looking at each other, right? Eye contact, you know, making it happen. One little tip there is, you know, you ever see those shots? There's always somebody doing this with the veil. Okay, so we talked about this little guy. We talked about this. Okay, so that's the chaos version, right? So that's Elton in and out of the pool, in and out of the pool, in and out of the pool, right? I love my ball. Um, again, that's a fisheye lens. I wanted to get, a, um, you know, I, I went to F11. I actually could have gone a lot higher on that, but I wanted to get that lens flare. You know, if you go to a smaller and smaller aperture, you get that lens flare. I wanted to catch the water. Um, he has an enormous head. I wanted to catch that enormous head. Right. And I am that's another one. I think I cloned out my feet because he's right there in front of me on this shot. Um, so that's all lens choice. Right. That's the 15 millimeter fisheye um, or for Elton right on his doggy dating site at Tinder. Um, you know, that's him. Right. So um, same dog. Right. Um, next day. Um, you know, that's a 200 millimeter lens. You know, so just the difference in, in what's available in terms of the, the equipment. Um, number eight, so the background, right? Um, the only part of the background that matters, you know, is what's going to be in the photo, right? If you kind of, you know, looking at, at this here, is this, uh, oh, there we go. If there's a gorilla there, you know, does it matter? If there's a, you know, stack of garbage there, it doesn't matter, right? It's just that little part of the frame, you know, that, that you're looking at. Um, you know, I mentioned this because, you know, again, it's common for somebody you're taking their picture to say, hey, can we do it over here, right? Can we do it over there? Um, like Eden, I mentioned, she loves the wreath on her front door. It looks god awful in a picture, right? Um, but, you know, okay, great. We'll take your wreath picture. And can I, can I get you over here? Just let's try it, you know? Um, and, and, you know, ultimately, you know, get it in the right spot. Um, you know, your choice of aperture to emphasize or de-emphasize the background. Um, and then getting people away from the background. I'd say people invariably want to get right on the background, you know, get them a few feet away, ideally three, four feet away, you know, give them some distance. That'll help with shadows if there are any, uh, but also, you know, de-emphasize it. But sometimes it matters, right? So is there any question where that picture was taken? Right, it's, you know, the background matters, the environmental, uh, aspect of it. Um, it took me like 10 years to get a decent hot dog guy picture. Um, they don't like you taking their picture, but I don't know why I want a hot dog guy picture, but you know, finally got it. I was really happy with it. Um, so the background matters, right? Uh, what does she do for a living? 
librarian, right? Background matters. That was for, um, she had gotten a promotion. You know, we want to do something a little different. Um, Rick Farrell was talking about being here tonight, but one thing I learned from him, um, somewhat on display there, but, you know, he talks about with a portrait, the quarter inch rule. You ever hear that? Right? The idea being instead of a head on shot, you know, rotate somebody's head until you've got about a quarter inch of skin showing between the eye and the outside. Not that it's just all eye, but leave just a little bit there. And if you look at your picture of George Washington on your dollar bills, you'll see he's doing the same thing, right? But just a little, a little way to turn somebody, you know, get them at their best. Yeah. I wish I, you know, I wish I'd, I, I could have told you I knew that at the time, but you know, so you know, it it, it works, right? Um, and then this one, I'd say, you know, if you put your thumb up over the over the guy in the picture, you know, it doesn't work. It's not much of a picture, you know, there. Um, so again, you know, sometimes it matters, but a lot of times with the portraits, it, it's not going to matter. Um, it's not about the landscape, right? Unless it is. Uh, which I'd say is here, right? So uh, Valley of Fire in, um, in Nevada, uh, my daughter there. Um, I think you kind of need, you know, my daughter in the picture on this one. Um, but on the other hand, it's not really about her. So what if you want to get more of the background, um, but still have it a portrait, right? I love a 50 millimeter lens for that. So just kind of show you, you know, some of the earlier concepts too. So, you know, you guys know the, the Castillo San Marco, right? So 50 millimeter shot, you get, you get the Castillo, you get the person. Um, I'm what, four or five feet in front of her, you know, here. Um, same thing, 50 millimeter lens, right? And going back to knowing where your happy place is, you know, I've photographed a lot of people sitting in that exact spot now, you know, because I know where it is. And, you know, and I know it works. Um, and then we go here, which is a little further down the bayfront, right? So, you know, less than five minutes of walking, three different spots, same lens. Um, but again, it works, that 50 millimeter works really good. Some other things I kind of point out there, right? That bended thing, right? So she's got a little bit of bend going on there, right? And I'd also say these two shots, whoops, I went too far. So we got a sweater here, sweater here, got the sweater off, right? Because who wants three pictures with the sweater, right? So just vary it a little bit, you know, and come up with something different. And again, three different pictures, you know, within five minutes of each other, you know, very, very little walking. Um, so two more left, right? So light them up. Um, we talked in the beginning, I'd say the best thing to do is to find the best light. You know, what if you can't get that light? Right. Um, well, you can create it, right? And that's a progression. Um, almost everything I showed tonight is all without shadows. It's all evenly lit and so forth. You know, one of the things I'm trying to do these days is also get a little more shadow going on things. Um, so this one, and talk about backgrounds too. So this is my son. Um, he needed a picture for his, his uh, uh, residency application. So that's uh, $50 of felt from Joanne Fabric behind him um you know hung up in our living room uh, i've got an umbrella light on one side you know i bought like the cheapest uh umbrella i could get on uh on amazon um and nothing on the other side so you get a little bit of that shadow you know makes it a little bit more interesting i think in a portrait um but generally you know the light you know i didn't bring a flash but about the worst thing you could do is straight on flash somebody you know it's going to look like that mug shot but you just turn it up, you know, just like the kid that I showed you within the mom picture, um, you can bounce it, right? Even in a place like this, this would bounce pretty good. Or maybe even you put that behind you, like this, this surface, right? So you turn the flash backwards and it'll actually come out in a nice spread for that person, you know, diffuse it. Uh, that was a shoot through. Yeah, the question was that a shoot through or reflective umbrella. So that was a shoot through umbrella. Um, you know, I'd say the biggest thing that you could do for yourself, in my opinion, is get outdoors and find good light, right? Number two would be 
um, get a, a good strobe with a soft box um, and it makes everything really easy. You know, once you're, Nancy's nodding, but once you, uh, once you get to that, it's a little cumbersome, you know, I mean, you gotta be committed, I guess, to have the big soft box, but it's a game changer. Um, but one on-camera flash, just one little flash, you know, can go a long way. Um, so this was a wedding at Treaty Oak. It rained hard. We did most of the wedding under the porch at the Hampton Inn nearby. Um, but I got a chance when the rain stopped to get out there, you know, so one, one, uh, one flash with a Gary Fong diffuser. Um, what's that? Yeah, it got, got wet. And, you know, other thing I point out there, you know, it's not perfect. I wish mom was peeking out a little better. We do have ones where mom's showing better, um, but I like the moment, right? Where they're having fun. The kid on the, on the far side is just exhausted. Um, you know, story there too. This was in the middle of COVID. So we had, this was masked down for 10 seconds, get the photo, get out, right? You know, um, but again, one, one flash can do it. You know, and that Gary Fong works really good, you know, for this sort of thing. If you've seen that, it looks kind of like a Tupperware that you put on your lens. Uh, there's other versions of it. But. So on camera flash again, you know, and these are again, the progression here, these are getting a little more complicated, you know, with the lighting, you know, they're showing, but um, pirates on the beach. So that was like six o'clock. It wasn't dark yet. Um, that's a, a fake sky, right? Um, and a lot of a lot of photoshopping to try to get that in place and do a reflection and so forth. But um, but I wouldn't have really been able to get the picture without the flash, you know, lighting up and getting the details of their face. So it's counterintuitive, you know. But fill flash, even in daylight, you know, will help you get those details, especially if somebody's really backlit, you know, which is what was going on here. Um, and studio strobes, we talked about that a little bit, saving your shoot, right? So um, that was Eric's seventieth birthday. Um, wife said, what do you want? Uh, I want pictures of my family, right? So we went out there, Eric's a good friend of mine, um, and Debbie and the whole family, but um, he lives on a golf course, big golfer, loves his golf course. We all got out on the golf course, it starts to rain. You know, we got nothing out there. So uh, we went back inside, I brought a softbox and studio stuff, you know, just in case. and. Um, had to rearrange furniture, you know, and, and you get the shot, right? Um, you know, a couple of other observations there. In the corner, you kind of got a laundry basket up the stairs. You know, Debbie was real worried about that. I'm like, it's not gonna matter, and it doesn't matter, right? We just push it out of sight. Um, that's another one where I got mom to sit right next to me, so Henry would look at me, really looking at his mom. Um, but, you know, I like that. I like, I like the shoes here too, actually you know, for whatever reason. Um, but that took you a little manipulating because they didn't all line up like that. You know, I think Eric in particular was way back, you know, so I wanted to get him on a level. Um, but once we got it, you know, we got it. And I think there, a little trick I learned somewhere is, ha, 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 right? And people laugh, right? And you can catch them doing, you know, do whatever your goofy laugh is, you know, and they're like, what? Um, all right, last one. So I say level up, right? So attend workshops and conferences. Some of this stuff I've, I've shown is from conferences like this. Um, I couldn't dream that up. I don't know if Nancy could dream that up for her, you know, her, her events, you know, but, um, you know, I had an opportunity to, to shoot that where I wouldn't otherwise. I say, you know, show your work, you know, enter these competitions. Um, you know, the competitions, they, they don't always pick the right thing or it's, you know, it's not always as meaningful as it could be, but at least gives you some gauge and something to aspire to. And I think the more you do it, the more ribbons you do win, you know, which is some measure of maybe, maybe you're improving. But participate in the club, you know, a lot of these things I'm showing you were from either this club or the club, you know, that I belong to in St. Augustine as well. Um, I know we have a speaker coming up on Photoshop. When's that? November. Okay. So, you know, I said, get the right light, right? Create light if you can, you know, if you can't get the right light. Number three, I think biggest thing you could do for yourself is get better at post-processing. Um, I went through some judging training for FC3, um, and I was surprised that the, the woman presenting it, you know, the grand poobah, for lack of a better description, um, she said, you know, 
nothing comes out of the camera without being post-processed, right? It needs it, right? That was her perspective that it's just, it's not a reasonable thing to think you're going to take the picture and just get it right out of camera, right? Whether it, now, whether you spend 30 seconds on it or not, you know, it's a different conversation, but, um, but here, you know, a couple of things I want to point out here, going back to the lighting again, you can, this was at uh, the torch run. So I photographed that for the sheriff a couple of times too. Uh, but this guy ran the whole 5K, you know, in his turnout gear. Um, you know, I'd point out there, you can kind of see right behind him, see how it's all kind of blown out, right? And then he's stepping into shadow. Um, I didn't always notice this, but, you know, I got, I've gotten to a point where I do notice stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, I need to wait for him to come into the right light, right? And I can, I can see that that's going to be a better picture. So I didn't take the picture, you know, when he's back where the yellow guy is, because look how bad the yellow guy looks, right? Um, so he got there and I thought, okay, you know, I'm really excited. Uh, I got the picture. And then I realized, you know, I could see his eyes through the face, uh, the, the face shield, you know, which I wouldn't have thought I would, I would be able to get. Um, so, you know, good picture, right? I'm really happy with it. Um, but that's better, right? Um, so, you know, what are we doing there, right? I just simply swapped out the background a little bit and thought, oh, it's a fireman. Maybe it should look like fire, right? You know, I'm a genius. Um, and yeah, 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 y'all can agree with me. Um, so, you know, and then I tried to sharpen it up a little bit, you know, go through um, looking at it. Now I see, okay, there's a couple of errors I made, but um, again, just, you know, the difference of knowing how to do, you know, Photoshop. I'm not an expert or anything, but, you know, it makes a difference. Uh, I found, yeah, his name's on it, and I found the guy, and I actually, I did email that to him or to the firehouse. I didn't, he didn't respond, so I don't know if I got it the right guy or not, but somebody told me, uh, who, Haley is the name on it, so somebody, and it's Firehouse 4. <laughs> I didn't realize until somebody told me. Um, all right, uh, step out of your com comfort zone, right? So this was another uh, conference that I went to. I actually had this hanging up in the atrium, um, and it's kind of interesting for me because um, on the one hand, I've got a lot of really good feedback on from this. People like this, you know. On the other hand, it's really not the kind of thing I've ever done, right? And um, the, the woman in here, whose name escaped me for a second, but I sent her a copy of this. And so she's in body paint, and I was the only person to do a portrait, you know, um, and, um, you know, I, I don't know what that says about me, right? But um, so hanging it, uh, hanging out there, one of the patrons, I guess, complained, felt that this was, you know, too satanic or something, you know? So I was like, isn't that interesting, right? But I had already typed this up as step out of your comfort zone, right? And say, so, you know, just doing some things a little different, you know, may, may create a different opportunity for you. Um, this kind of a dad joke, right? So reflect, you know, um, this is a reflect door was used, you know, so you can do, if you haven't seen one of these, it's kind of cumbersome. It's better if you have somebody to help you. Um, but instead of a flash, you know, the kind of thing that you put up in your windshield, you know, to protect your dash, um, you know, they make those as reflectors and you can see how much it lights up her face in this instance, you know, the, the light was coming in um you know really litter up you know with that but i'd say reflect on what works for you okay um and experiment right so that's uh from the last led workshop you know so you've got an opportunity to do that again um that came out of um you know that same <laughs> conference i met you in the shutterfest there was a guy he takes the led projector puts an image onto a model right and i went through that and i was like this is pretty cool and so we did that as a workshop with our club and your club um it got a lot of really good images liz got, a, got an award-winning uh image out of it you know and it wasn't it wasn't that hard you know but i will say walking up to it i was a little worried you know like are we gonna get anything you know but just experiment and you know i, I think it turned out you know pretty solid um that's it so thank you thank you thank you very much well thank you that's very kind i prefer landscapes and stuff but you can just ask
Oh, I, I do need to mention one thing uh, with that. So um, I actually had an opportunity to teach a continuing education class for Flagler coming up for Flagler College. So if you know anybody that's looking for a beginning uh, photography class, uh, we're going to do four, four nights in October. Uh, it's on the Flagler Lifelong Learning. I think it's like 60 bucks, but um, there's that. And if it's okay, I'll put it on, on the Facebook page for the club. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So, a couple of final things. He kept re referring to things that he and Nancy have done in terms of workshops. And you've had two or three that the two of you collaborated with some other people related to portraiture. And I won the, the two of them that he mentioned, I went to and I learned an awful lot. So they, they will be coming up. So if this piques your interest, then there are probably a couple of workshops in the next six to eight months that uh, you can try to get some help putting this into action. Other thing is that we have a member who is has come into possession of some old film camera equipment and he needs assistance and it's a Nikon, right Andy? Yeah, a Nikon. So if there's someone tonight or on Zoom that has familiarity using, uh, of working with Nikon in film, he's having some trouble with his equipment. So uh, let me know and I'll get it to Andy so that you two of you can connect. And if nobody here on Zoom has that particular skill set, We'll put it out in the general membership. All right, so thank you all for tonight and uh, have a great evening. And I'll see a bunch of you over at uh, the Fish Company in a few minutes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Michael. They go over there. I don't know where they, you can bring them out. Yeah. Yeah.